This podcast is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Both teams, well played game, pretty well pitched. Um, you know, the key to the game to me was that there were two keys. First off, we 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 got through the uh, third inning with only them scoring two runs. You know, they got a chopper infield hit, bump base hit, had some things going their way. And uh, he had a deep hit a deep fly ball, but but I just felt like when Hagen came out in the sixth, and we're down a run, and he and he got through the sixth, he uh, yeah I think it really motivated our team. It was just uh, you know fifteen sixteen pitch inning, and uh, you know we came in, and we got two walks and a and a home run. We had the lead. I think. Uh, it was just big. It was like he saved our bullpen if we didn't come back and win, but he just did a tremendous job fighting, fighting through the night. And I thought Ole Miss hitters, they fought him. He, they did a good job. And Hagen didn't have his best stuff. And uh, but he still he still went six innings and only gave up two runs. And I, you know, I, didn't, I just saw he struck out eleven. Um, the four walks is hasn't kind of really happened this year. Uh, so that's where, where the stuff that the command wasn't what it's been, but he still had a, a quality outing, gave us a chance and, uh, and we got a couple of big hits. So, uh, good win for us. David in the sixth, uh, it was the third time through the order for your guys. Was it a matter of that? They had seen him a couple of times. You felt like was key. It did. You know, I mean, we told them exactly what they were going to get, you know, they were right handers were going to get sink and on the hand and you got to try to pull the guy. You know, for the most part, you got to pull his fastball, and obviously the breaking ball, you got to shoot it the other way if you can. Um, you know, so that that's what made, in my opinion, a Loy swing hitting that fastball the other way into the net. You know, he tried to sneak one by him over there, and I don't know where it was. Might have been down the middle, but you know, his approach was was great, and uh, you know, he he had obviously that was a big swing of the game. He had a big night for us, and. Uh, uh, but seeing him three times, uh, it, it made a big difference. Probably, probably started to get a little bit tired as well. The ball probably wasn't sinking quite as much. But you know, I mean, he he got us out pretty quick there for a while. I mean, he didn't throw very many pitches, and it looked like he was going to give give him seven or eight innings if we didn't do something. We finally we finally got to him a little bit. With all of those outs uh, on contact early in the in the pitch count, like were, were you happy with what you were seeing the first couple of times, sir? <laughs> not really yeah, from our hitters. Not really. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, you know, the first thing wasn't bad, but then, you know, then, you know, we had, what did we have? We had a base hit on the second pitch of the game, hit hard and McLaughlin just misses hitting the two run homer lines out. And, and then, you know, it, it didn't go great after that. I don't think, but, uh, yeah, the, the third time through was big, and, you know, that was something that obviously we bring up in the dugout. Third time through, we're going to get him this time. And just, just baseball lingo a little bit, but it it it, it is a, it is something that happens in the game. You get you get to see somebody, the hitters figure it out just a little bit more each time. And uh, good job by our guys. Told them, you know, we're down, didn't panic. Smith got us through that, that, that third inning with only giving up a couple of runs, and – you know, it, it, the difference between them scoring two and four, that, big, that was big that that didn't happen. And then we came in and scratched across a run there in the fourth. And uh, obviously, we we felt like we were going to win the game. We just got to keep it close. And uh, we did. Uh, the, the four walks for, for Hagen's night, did you see, you know, Maybe Ole Miss just did a good job laying off some pitches a little bit, a little bit more wild. What do you see? And then also, uh, yeah, maybe ahead. didn't quite have the command that he's had most of the season, but you know, give them some credit as well. They laid off some breaking balls that, uh, you know, that maybe, maybe they, some teams swing at. So, uh, but, but, you know, Hagen, he pitched great. You know, it's, it's hard getting out SEC hitters and, um, you know, they got his pitch count up there a little bit on the second and the third inning. And then he settled in a little bit for us. I felt like he was getting better, you know? I mean, the only reason he came out was because of the pitch count. His stuff was great. So, uh, proud of him for hanging in there 
but getting through that sixth inning was the key. And it uh, it kind of fired us up and got us to within, you know, nine outs. If we could just get the lead, and that's that's what happened. So is, is Hagen the weapon of the strikeout get magnified when, you know, bases loaded situations, just having that that ability to set guys down without them putting the ball oh, in yeah. play? I mean, they're thinking, man, I can't strike out. I got to drive in a run. Maybe they go out of the zone and they chase a little bit, trying to jump on, and it's not right there. It's hard to hit. So, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of a lot of guys would have given up three, four, five that inning, gave up two, and we're there we were right there in the game, not a problem. Seemed like McIntyre had to fight through his first couple of innings. Just what did you see out of him? Yeah, he, you know, I thought the, his cutter was really moving. Um, it was just running away, just to maybe just off the plate. He made an adjustment the second inning through pretty good and, uh, you know, tried to keep him right around 50 pitches and just had the matchup with, with Stone uh, against Fisher. Fisher's a really good hitter. got a lot of bat speed and, you know, Stone did a great job getting him. Sprague lot tacked on the extra run there with the, the home run. Just what did you see on his at-bat there? That was a uh, – that was – that was – I don't know how to say it, but it that was big for us. And uh, I know that, you know, all of a sudden we shocked him, you know, two walks, home run, we're winning. They're winning the whole game. Now they're down two. And two hitters later, a guy hits one off the foul pole, and you're kind of going two to three. Now we need three at least to tie. It, it gets it gets difficult, and there's only so many outs left in the game. So uh, it was a really big swing. And when he hit it, it was hard to say. It, it started to hook, and then it kind of straightened out. The, the wind had died down a little bit. But he kind of top spun it, and instead of side spinning it, it just kind of sunk. And it was good to see it hit that fair pole down there. I guess Hagen was, I think, was at ninety pitches after five innings. Yep. Is it at this point in the season where it's kind of a decision going the other way to send him back out for the sixth and more comfortable pushing him over hundred really, pitches? Yeah, the fifth inning to me is a really good inning for him, and because uh, I think he started the fifth with what about eighty pitches. Something like that. So when he got him out quick, we we're like, hey, stuff's still good. He's throwing fine. Let him go back out. And, uh, you know, what did he throw? 105? Yeah. So, yeah, you don't want to throw him too much more than that right now, but he's a pretty strong kid. I think he's fine. And then the one run in the fourth where you got him over and in, what, what did that do maybe for the dugout's confidence? Well, we got two on. With with maybe one out, I guess, and then uh, they wild pitched us over, and uh, you know I think was it Sprague lot that you know he got inside a ball. I mean that thing was running, chopped it. You know, they, really as a coach, you can't play in there. You know, you got a two run lead. You got you know you you give up one, and we got one, cut that lead in half, and uh, you know then one pitch later they were in the dugout, but. Yeah, it was – you could just feel the momentum starting to swing our way just a little bit because they weren't scoring anymore. So, uh, I we looked over from uh, last Thursday. Hagen went six innings. McIntyre went two and two-thirds, and Stone went one, one out, and it happened again tonight. Would you say that Stone Hewlett is kind of a – somewhat of a closer when he, when he's facing left-handed hitters went for the last out of the game? Well, yeah, he's, a, he's kind of a specialist guy. Um, and I don't know – You'd call him straight up closer, um, but he's he's closed two games in in league play and done a great job. And whether you whether you get one out or four, you know it, it's you still finish the game for us. And you know we brought him in, like I said, for the matchup left on left. He's one of their best hitters. He's got eleven home runs. Um, you know for sure we had brought him in if he would have been he would have been the time run. We thought you know. This is this is one reason he's here to get lefties out and let's bring him in. He did it. Seemed pretty evident in the fall right away that Vahiba was a much better defender than the numbers showed last year. But just how much growth have you seen from him defensively at shortstop from when he first got on campus to now? Well, I think he's oh he's gotten he's continued to just develop and get better probably month by month. And uh, you know that play he made coming and getting that ball. That was that was a great play, and I mean he was he was back there pretty good. You know, there were I think there were two strikes on the hitter maybe when he hit it, and uh, I don't know. It was just uh, when it when it bounced over the pitcher's head, you're thinking, wow, this is gonna be a tough one. And 
you know, and then it's all about the transfer from the glove to the hand. And that ball was on its way with a little velocity, and it was a perfect throw. And uh, that's it took all of that to get him. But, I mean, just to answer your question, I mean, he takes care of the baseball. He's, uh, you know, just like the play the other day when last week when it looked like it was going to be a double play ball, and that ball took a bad hop and came up on him. And, you know, he just didn't get all uptight and go pick the ball and throw the pitcher. He scrambled and got that ball and threw the runner out at first. And, you know, I've seen guys that don't do that. And they just get frustrated and walk away from it. And, uh, you know, it's uh, – it's it's what you want your shortstop to be, just a guy that, you know, makes a routine play and make a make a great one every now and then. And you look up at the end of the year and field and percentage percentage is real good. And probably the teams won a lot of games if your shortstop and your second baseman are pretty good. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.